Hi, and welcome to video two of three videos for section 1.3. In this video, in this uh, specific video, we're going to look at a bunch of different examples in applying this idea of the limit. So the first example we're going to look at is we want to guess the value of, and here's our notation, the limit as x approaches 1 of the following function, x minus 1 over x squared minus 1. So let's take a moment and look what we got going on here. We want to know, as x gets closer to 1, what does the value of this function equals? Well, what do we have? Remember, this is our value of a. So as we get closer and closer to a, I can't just plug in 1 because what happens? If I plug in 1 into the numerator, 1 minus 1 is 0. That's OK. But if I plug it in the denominator, we get 1 squared is 1 minus 1 is 0. Makes this thing undefined. So now I have 0 over undefined. How am I supposed to even guess what this should equal? So the way that we can do this, at least at this point with the limited knowledge that we have, is the old-fashioned method. Get out those calculators and start crunching numbers. Build yourself a table. But remember when I had <coughs> excuse me, that graph of x squared, what did we do? We came from the left side, we came from the right side. So we're going to do the same thing here, but with our value of 1. So if I build this table, So here's my values of x. This is my value for the function. So if I want values on the left side of 1, that's going to be what? Well, I could try 0 0.999, 0 0.99, 0 0.9. So you can see that if I put in 1 here as the value I'm getting closer to, I go 0 0.9, 0 0.99, 0 0.999, getting closer and closer to 1 without actually hitting 1. And I can do the same going the other way. So if I have after 1 on the right side or the positive side of the number line, what do I have? 1.001, 1.01, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 
I come down, get closer to 0 0.5, closer to 0 0.5, closer to 0 0.5. From the right side, if I'm coming back towards 1 from infinity this way, what do I get? Well, I keep getting closer to 0 0.5. And so that's what this means. Even though at x is equal to 1, there is no specific value, I'm actually getting closer and closer to 0 0.5. So this limit is equal to 0 0.5. Because again, remember what the formal definition says. We're not actually concerned with the value at x equals a. We're only concerned with the limit as x approaches a from either the left or the right. All right, so let me leave that up, the graph anyways. So for this example here, I want to know what is the limit as x approaches 1 of the function g of x, which is well, that wasn't very good, a piecewise function. So remember one of the earlier video sets I talked a lot about how we're going to be dealing with piecewise functions a lot. And here's one here, trying to find the limit of a piecewise function. If I have x minus 1 over x squared minus 1 when x is not equal to 1, that's one of our functions. But when x does equal 1, we have a value of 2, plain old number 2. So if we were to graph this, what does this look like? Well, obviously, and that's why I left this graph on here, this first part is the graph that we had from the last example. This line here, this piecewise, says that when x equals 1, my value of the function g of x is equal to 2. So just one dot right there. So now, what is our answer here? What is the limit as x approaches 1 of this function g of x? So I'm going to pause here for a minute. If you want to hit pause on the video yourself and kind of give it some thought, what is our answer as x approaches 1 for this function? So, remember what the def definition says. I don't care what the value of the function is at that specific point, at the value of a. I'm only concerned with what value does the function approach as I get closer and closer to that value. So as I get closer, when x is not uh, 1 on the left side, what do I get closer and closer to? Half. When x is not 1 from the right side, what do I get closer and closer to? Half. I really don't even care what x equals when it's 1. I'm only concerned as I'm approaching from the left and right side, where am I getting closer and closer to? So the answer for this one is what? Same as the last example. So just because we put this point in that, oh, at x equals 1, our value is 2, doesn't matter in terms of limits because we don't really care what the value is at that specific point. We're only wondering what are the values as it approaches that point. All right, so let's look at another example. So on this one, I'll give you the problem. Uh, if you want to hit pause, try to work it through, see what you come up with for an answer. I'll give you a little hint sort of at the start. But we want to guess the limit as x approaches 0 of the function sine of x over x. So a couple things here. First, if we were just to plug in 0, what happens? We get a 0 in the denominator. That's big trouble. So just as in the first example we looked at, we're going to have to build a table. 
pick values just on the negative side, pick values just on the positive side from zero, calculate what those numbers are, and see what number does that get closer and closer to. Now, here's a little hint as you're building the table, as you're using your calculator. We want your calculator, just as before, is going to be in radian mode. So if this is not degrees, we're not talking about x gets closer and closer to zero degrees, we're talking about zero gets closer and closer to zero radians. So go ahead if you need to, pause here, try to work this out, see if you can figure out what value we're getting closer to. Uh, if you want, I'll sort of help you build the table, I can give you some values to try, then if you want to plug them in and see uh, what you're getting for an answer. Otherwise, like I said, go ahead and hit pause. Once you think you have an answer, come on back. If you need a little help where to get started, well, here we go. So we're at, on the left side of zero, that's our negative number. So let's go negative one, negative 0 0.5, negative 0 0.1. And on the positive side, we'll use the same values, just positive. So 0 0.1, 0 0.5, and positive one. So if you're waiting for that little hint, what values to put in the table, go ahead and try that now. Crunch them on the calculator, see what you get. All right, welcome back. So if you use your calculator, you're in radian mode. When it's at negative one, you should have gotten 0 0.841. At negative 0.5, you should have got 0 0.959. And at negative 0 0.1, you should have got 0 0.998. Same values for our positive side as well. So at, at positive 1, 0 0.841. 0 0.5, we got 0 0.959. And at 0 0.1 positive, 0 0.998. So, looking at the table, as we get closer and closer to if we call this zero, what value do we get closer and closer to? One, right? And if we were to graph this, so if this is our value for one here, well, we know that there's no domain at one, so that's our open circle, and this guy basically kind of looks like an umbrella, branching off to both sides. So that's the graph, it didn't ask you to graph, I'm just showing you what it looks like. Um, so that again, if we're coming from the left, we're getting closer and closer to one as we come from the right, closer and closer to one. Therefore, the answer to this one, the limit as x approaches zero of that function is equal to the value one. So a few examples there. Hopefully you're starting to get the idea now what we have to do, at least at this point, in terms of finding the limits as we approach some value. Come on back, we'll do video three. We'll look at another uh, example and talk about um, this idea from the left hand, from the right side. And uh, that'll wrap up uh, section 1.3.